Welcome back. Today we're going to do a mini reveal and give you a bit of an update. Slash, I'm going to have a list out of things that Tim needs to finish. In other words, Jill wants to make a snag list on camera. Yeah. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today it's all about a mini update on the cabin. Just showing you where we're at, what we need to finish, and getting Tim motivated to do that. And why we haven't been showing it too much lately. Okay, so in April we had to be here on site because we had the lambs all coming, and Tim's very excited. Um, <gasps> as well I just didn't all. want to drive back and forth. No, no, five times we, no, well, no one did. We all wanted to be here. We all wanted to witness them. So. Anyway, it was livable, so we moved in. Easter holidays, whoop, whoop, totally illegal, but um, fine. Um, yeah, well, we'll have to touch on that in a future planning video, yeah, but we will. We'll basically, because deep. yeah, because of planning and stuff like that, at the time, it was still dubious whether we should move in, but we just had to be here for livestock at and that point. And so. technically, we that was a good enough reason to be here, so we For a it. period of time, but yeah. yeah, anyway. So we moved in, but of course, then, you know what it's like when you when move Tim, in. When Tim got to the farm, that was it. We were living here. He finished off a few projects and then he was like, I need to spend time in a farm. The animals are, you know. Throw, you're throwing the deals around now. You can't do that until, and you, we've got until people, I got the kitchen finished. We've got family coming to stay. That's so true. We're looking after the farm. So that's quite a nice deadline because otherwise we'll live in a half finished cabin Forever. for three years and then we'll sell it. To, you know, we'll finish it to sell yeah. rather than living in it nicely. So, so we don't want to go through everything we've got to do, but there's things like final trims and blinds to put up. But really in here, the big bits are the beams. Remember yeah. every light has a big beam to go up on it, which we will be doing. Um, but like that is pretty low down on the list. It is, it is. And like the backboard here, which we have painted, but it's just out. So we just need to stick it up, Yeah. don't we? So we didn't, we tried to save a bit on the kitchen by not doing their end panels cause, because they're just really overpriced. So we did a, a yellow board yeah. there you've done as a feature yes, isn't it? so i just need to build two end panels for the end of there and the end of there so far we've had two different configurations we had the dining room here to start with for a that week was or our two. original wasn't it like we were like no it'd be lovely with the view and and the, the food could just come here but it just didn't work really quickly it didn't work did yeah. it yeah and it's nicer to sit and see out yeah so especially in the summer we might change it for winter configuration yeah. that was what we thought and then we've got kind of, I mean, we don't want to show you too much because it's just a bit of a lived in I'm, mess. I'm waiting for storage. Yeah. Because I've only got four little boxes here. So that's so kind that of the playroom be... area, yeah. toy area. Because it will be storage here. And then the and table then here. Be... And by the time you tidy that away, we can extend this out and we sat 10 that's, yeah. pretty comfortably. It, yeah. yeah. So and, that is... and there is skirting to go up in here still. Yeah, um, we're so getting we'll, there. We'd gain like five inches of flooring too. It was Oh, the yeah, the stuff sat down all... there. Yeah. Together. But yeah, we've got frames up on the wall, we've got lights. It's to it's nice livable. It's just we want those like Yeah, so it's all the things that are non standard. Like here I want to do a faux post, like you know, um like a cap almost a U shape there, and also on this double stud at the end, so that they kind of just create a bit of a feature. And that just takes a bit of time. It's a full day, probably. Things we have done, because it's always good to remind ourselves of these. Tim's done the kickboards. Sugar. The what? Oh, the plinths. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Tim's done the, yeah, the plinths in the bottom, which was really good. Anyway, so you get the idea. It's kind of 95% there, but it's always that last bit that just takes ages, or you just don't have the energy to do it. But not with a wife like Jen. <laughs> I love her for it. You're not doing the other trap to breaks until so now we've got break, breaks on one side. It's it's getting there, and this entrance area has worked pretty well, isn't it? Yeah, we need to well. do some proper shoe storage, an old kitchen cabinet there, but but it still it still works. It's it enough space. Look too bad. Yeah, at least they look tidy. So the utility, we're finally sorting this out. So this is what it seems a bit elaborate, bearing in mind it's a caravan, but our utility room is probably. As big as the kitchen, isn't it? No, it's just bigger than. Well, the it's big, it's big enough to be a kitchen for this sort of building. Yeah. But um, it's never going to be a tidy room. But basically, laundry and storage and stuff over there. Um, <laughs> hooks Tim, up. We'll Tim's put some, office without a desk. Yeah, there we go. There's a screen, but that's about it at the moment. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's a bit of a Aladdin's cave, but also it's going to do everything in this room. So And the dog can sleep in here. And then, well, do we share? Do we share? I don't know. Is it worth the, the pain? I'll let you hold this. Right? Look, it actually looks pretty neat in there. Yeah, it looks neat though. Does it work, Tim? All right. For those of you on Instagram, you'll know what I've been dealing with here. I swear this has probably taken four days. At least. Not full days. I mean, come on. But he gives up. <sighs> all right. So concealed toilet. Well, I'm not going to take it all apart. But you know the story. The cistern's in there. But it's so tight. It's only 200 mil deep, this thing. It's so tight in there that you can't really, well, you can't do anything. Um, and this is not designed to like slide the panel down at the end. In the end, enough people have suggested it. I've just hacked the unit apart and made this a loose panel and I'll be able to kind of use some adhesive and fit it in afterwards. But it's almost there. But of course, basin leaks and other bits and bobs. So basin may come in today. I just don't understand. I was saying to Jay yesterday, all these things that you buy, whether it's, you know, a basin with a tap, the tap's always rubbish, or the waste is really poor quality. So you end up buying it and then going out and replacing those components. Same with like the basin waste, they never really seal well enough. So basin mate, which buy are well. only like one pound fifty or something. Buy once, cry once. Uh, same with the toilet. I mean it was okay. It had all the components, but if I was going to do another one of these again, one, I'd definitely do the end panel, but I would definitely do the first fixed pipe work in a different way because I had the waste from the basin going in too close to where the flexi needed to go in. And Anyway, Learn it's almost there. It's almost What's the there. biggest le lesson? Don't do my future plumbing. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Find a good plumbing. No, no one wants well, to Well, I don't mind doing it, I, and I know no, I can do, do it. Well, you I do, do mind, mind sorry, it. I do mind doing it. I know I can get it done, but... There's more to life than doing it with yourself sometimes. <laughs> That's going against everything we believe in in this channel. Right, let's... Um, oh, it's knowing your limitations. Kids' bedrooms, I'll film, because then I can crop out all the mess. Here Not we go. That much we'll skim, we'll skim over. I just a little beauty. I know, I just won't show the floors. So the bedrooms are... Pretty done. Pretty much done, actually. And the painted. So these are done. There's a little bit of trim to go around the ceilings, but all the woodwork is painted. Yeah. It's only on this side, which is primed or needs priming. The f window frame still need doing, but I that's... know, that, that is the bottom of the list stuff. So just the oh, trim. Yeah, but it's... I know, I know. It doesn't look finished, does it? So another one here. Woohoo! And then another messy one at the end. And then how messy is our one? Well, it would be less messy if I had hooks for my... Oh. Down. So we were going to ask... Look, here's our view. Worked out okay. So we actually have, we've got a video, which we haven't put out, I just realized, digging for a view. Mm. Remember when we built this, we had the concrete retaining wall out there and it was it was blocking basically the whole window. Yeah, it was pretty, it, was, it wasn't blocking too much light, but. Well, it, no view. It was no view, so it was a bit, so a bit like you're in a cave. We lifted them out. Um, Craig lifted out the first few, then I lifted out some of the forks and then we dug away and reseeded and it looks cool. And I don't know why I haven't put the video up yet, but that's a reminder. So we'll try and get that out this week because it made a huge difference. So this is my little question. We have put three old chests of drawers in there for temporary storage. We need to get a- Unit. Slide in door, built in wardrobe there. We, want, we need to maximize the whole height. If you've got any suggestions for full height sliding doors for a walk-in, not a walk-in, a built-in wardrobe, then let us know because it's just expensive however you do it. But if we do the built-in bit behind, it'd be good to just have three doors, four doors on tracks. Um, so if anyone's got any tips for suppliers for those, that'd be good because any of the built-in wardrobe companies just are silly expensive. Finally, finally, the bathroom looks respectable. Again, a few things to do, but- um, Got the panel out. It's working. There. We're still Thanks. trying to sort out the shower. That was gonna be a sponsored video, so we're Waiting. Wait and see if that's going to happen. And extractor needs to Extractor fan has got to go in, but at the moment the window's open all the time. So it's usable in here. And mm -hmm. electric radiators are working. Uh, so we've got warm, dry towels. Laundry bin. Whoop. See, while we're at it, that is probably worth a mention because this week we'll be launching a video which we've been working on, which is all about how we built our own electric radiators using some products. So I think it'll be out tomorrow, if I'm not wrong. Thursday. If, I, if I'm correct. Thursday. Oh, no, that is That's tomorrow. tomorrow. 
so instead of just buying electric radiators for, for the different rooms, we went ahead and we kind of converted and built our own. And they're all on an app and Wi-Fi and it worked really well. So we'll be sharing that. Uh, let's go back and then we're going to show you the outside because, well, has anything changed? Then to the outside. Has anything changed? Well, you probably would say no, but I promise you, progress has been made and I've got a video coming out shortly. Unfortunately, I started on the cladding and we hit a stumbling block pretty soon in. I've done the corner trims, built framing around the windows and various other bits of the first part, the trim. Then I went to install the cladding and we had a massive fail. Um, so I won't allude too much into that at this point, we'll go into it in the next video or a future video when we start on the cladding. I think I found the solution, but I might need your help on whether that's the right way to go. All right, we're back inside. Let me show you a few of the things which we have done off camera, which you missed, but I don't think you missed too much. I've still got to do the upstand, but one thing that we haven't talked about is MVHR. So this unit up here is a decentralized MVHR unit, which very important in the winter, especially when the windows will be shut. Um, this is an airtight build, remember, so therefore we need to have forced ventil like mechanical ventilation. That does both, and I've done a video on the install of that, which again, video's done, I think. Yeah, maybe. So we'll put it out, and we've had it now for three or four months running, three months, and uh, we can give a bit of feedback, but I think we won't really know how well it's working until the winter mm. when we're shut up again. Yeah. All done down here. Uh, little things like I went with oak carcasses. You can just see through the if you catch the angle. So I'm, if I'm really fussy, I might get in there and paint those two bits <laughs> in, in three years' time. Uh, flooring is all finished. Remember, we ran out of a pack, so we had to order a whole pack just to finish off the last few bits, which again meant we could get those in. Fridge is all now levelled up. I've just got to get this top box in. Mm, it's sat today? on boxes at the moment, but unfortunately, we need to get this trim in, and then it will hang off. That. So I've got to build a bit of a subframe against that wall and I've put a trim between the two. Either way I can get that in and that's almost the kitchen done apart from the cornice and pelmets. One thing we didn't really go into in too much detail is, is how to walk into walls, is how we're doing hot water in here. Um, we were trying to go all electric, which we probably had the power to do, um, we had the supply to do, but we didn't have, you can't really have a bath that way unless you're going to have a tank. So what we decided to do is go with LPG. So we've got this that was installed April as well, I think, just before we moved in, the day before we moved in. Oh, we haven't peeled off the plastic, I'll leave that. So simple to use, it's basically a combi, but it doesn't do heating. So just a gas, instant hot water. It takes a little bit of time, doesn't it, to okay. to kick in, because obviously, it, you know, there's no, um, like little tank or anything in there or no constant pilot I don't think either way it works and it's nice and simple so that's in and we've got two big tanks outside so that was all done by the gas guy the LPG dude but apart from that I think plumbing is all done apart from my little bit of a basin leak sewage treatment plant I did again I didn't really shoot a video on it that's all installed we haven't had to have it emptied yet but I haven't checked it yet. So we'll get into a rhythm of, because it's quite a small one, because it's an above ground unit. It might be every six months or something like that, but we'll have to have a look. But it's a proper sewage treatment plant with all the different tanks and everything. So that was a nice way to go. It meant we didn't have to do any groundwork, so it's a temporary solution we can move afterwards. I mentioned heating. We've got currently radiators in all the bedrooms, just electric heaters, which to be honest, we barely used even when it was really cold in April. Um, towel radiator is done. All we need to do now is work out what our heat demand is for this room in winter. And I think we're just gonna play it by ear and see how it goes. So we've got the new radiator installed, which will be in the future video, probably tomorrow. We've got enough to do another one over on that wall in the corner and the unit to convert it. However, there are two other options. One is we do an air con unit instead which would help in summer, but we could use it as heating in the winter, which is like an air to air heat pump. Um, but equally, of course, it makes sense to have a wood burner. So we need to work out the original location for that was going to be where that sofa is. We need to work out if it's still an option and where it could go. We've got 
uh, an endless su supply of free firewood, so it makes sense to use that. It's just whether we can do it. Um, but I think that's the update. If you spotted anything we've missed that we need to do, please don't. Let us know. <laughs> there won't be enough space in the comments. But yeah, I mean, hopefully that answers because we are getting emails all the time and messages saying, "What's happened to the cabin? Cabin's here. It's not moved. Believe it or not." It. And it's, it's amazing being able to live here now. So we're going to the future videos coming up, which will explain more of those steps. One, the ventilation unit. Two, we've got the digging, the groundworks outside, yep. which now, I mean, look, that's cool. It's uh, super easy to see escaping goats and pigs now. Uh, we've got the heating episode coming out soon. And then planning. we're back on. And we're oh, I'm planning. planning. So we've started the emotional journey of going back over our planning issues over the last 18 months. Applications. Yeah, <laughs> and, and going through how what's happened, what hasn't happened, and where we are now. So the first one of those will be out in the next week or so. And finally, I'll be jumping onto that cladding and I'll explain the problems I'm having and might need to do a bit of an SOS call, but I think I've found a solution. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we still have our cost breakdown to do. Yes. And of course, once we've actually finished the cabin, we'll do a full tour. But I need to finish the cladding and everything on the outside for that first. Mm. And a few other bits and bobs. Cool. Let's go and shift some Let's muck. go and shift some muck. Our job for this morning is to shift muck. That's quite a bit of a team. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. Catch you that. <laughs> you should use that.